Hi, I'm Gail Kimbrough. And I'm Jeff Barron. Uh, today we're going to talk about our auto EFBs, and since we have seen an increase in demand on the auto EFB side, we need to get a little bit of info out to people. You know, we probably do. What's that E stand for? Enhanced. Enhanced. So we've got an enhanced flooded battery. Jeff, most of us have heard about enhanced flooded batteries, also known as EFB. Acronyms. Yeah, exactly. Got to have an acronym for everything. But, you know, in industry professionals always know that now know that what EFB stands for. We're beginning to learn about the benefits and applications, but please tell us more, Jeff. So absolutely, Gail. So with the EFB batteries, I mean, they are significant development in the uh, automotive industry. So especially when you look at the rise of the start-stop vehicles that we have now, big time. They're designed for modern vehicles with start-stop systems offering improved durability while running at a partial state of charge throughout the lifespan of them. Wow. So they are essential for vehicles with start-stop systems on them. That's exactly right, Gail. So the auto EFB plays a vital role in ensuring reliable engine starts, optimum fuel performance, and the start-stop systems are just high demand. So they also find applications in the mid-hybrid vehicles and auxiliary batteries in the hybrid and electrical cars. Overall, they are a cost efficient and enhanced vehicle performance and reduce the emissions. Makes the government happy. You know, I think we're going inside the battery now, but how are the auto EFB batteries different from regular ones? So, good question. So, auto EFBs are designed with enhanced components to withstand the high demands of start stop systems. They also consist of a durable plastic case, positive and negative plates, of course, and you got the envelopes. It's also got liquid electrolyte and a venting system that's standard for the SAE Automotive Post. Can we see what's inside an EFB battery? You know what, Gail? I'm sure we can. So, let me show you a little bit. Yeah. All right, Gail, so let's uh, talk a little about the internals of the EFB battery. Let's cut it open, buddy. Yeah, let's do it. So, what we're gonna start out with, you know, and, and it could be on different manufacturers, but, some have what we call the BIC caps, which are the big caps, the best in class. So we actually have some that actually have those, but there are also some EFBs that are actually sealed flat top. Right. So yeah, we, flat we top. still have those. You won't be able to see them. Yep. But inside, we still got to have a bunch of positive and negative plates. Yes. A little bit different design though. So Gail, we start out with our lead grid in general, uh, and it could be an, an expanded metal or could be a power frame design as we yeah. call it. Uh, but from there, what do we get put on the plates to make them work? Well, we have to put a paste material, a chemical paste material, specifically designed for the EFB in this situation. And so whether it's a negative and or positive, especially a positive paste material on the grid itself to make it a plate, to design it from being a grid that's just a metal framework to being a plate if you will. Exactly. So from there, we've got to put one of these uh, plates in an envelope. And what that envelope is doing is sealing it from the other one. Because if you got a positive and negative plate touching, that's never a good thing. So that's, that's a short. direct short. Exactly. <laughs> so batteries don't work when they're no. shorted. Not at all. Well, they do, but they do what we call a rapid disassembly. Absolutely. They come apart really quick. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Yeah, we don't need that. So we've got kind of a combination of sponge lead on the negative and a lead dioxide on the positive side. But with these EFB, there's a little bit more chemistry that's uh, taking place with these batteries. So this makes these batteries work at a partial state of charge throughout the lifespan of them. And that high density positive paste material that you're referring to is a slightly different integration of chemical active material than yes. you would in a flooded battery. It's enhanced, that's why it gets its name. Yep. Well, and there's another feature that we, we do with this battery as well, Gail. On the positive plate, we always put what we call a scrim. It's a mesh. So what this is doing is, while it's wet and it's going into the curing process, this is actually bonding that paste material even more to that grid. Oh, that's great. So what that does, and of course it helps us whenever we're doing discharge and recharges, yeah. it keeps that paste material from actually shedding. So we get a longer life. And, a lot more cycles. Oh, exactly, and the cycle life is just unbelievable. So now these start-stop vehicles, I mean, this plays a major role in making these things last 
uh, throughout the life that we need them to. Yeah, every time you come to a stop and it, the vehicle shuts down, it's got to restart, so it needs that 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 cranky power, but it needs that cycle life, yeah. enhanced cycle life. So that. when you're looking and feeling these things, when you're out on the, on the road and you're coming to a stop sign, you really can't feel that engine shut off because everything else is still running, taken care of by the battery. What makes them more durable and reliable? So the auto EFB batteries excel in extended cycle life and increase charge acceptance. So they can actually endure more of the discharge cycles with slower degradation, making them ideal for the vehicles with the start-stop system. The features ensure long-lasting performance, reduced maintenance, and improved efficiency. They are actually enhanced batteries then. Yes, also. they are. What exactly does that mean? Great observation. So the enhanced part of the EFB battery refers to their specific design and technology. So let me break it down for you. So the enhanced durability of the EFB batteries have thicker and more robust plates than conventional batteries. This construction allows for them to handle frequent charge and discharge cycles associated with these start-stop systems. So leading to a longer lifespan and reduced risk of premature failures. We also throw in now, Gail, the design for the start-stop systems with the batteries where they are specifically engineered to meet those high demands of the start-stop systems. So with the start-stop technology, the engine shuts down when the vehicle comes to a stop and it restarts once you take your foot off the brake pedal. So the enhanced batteries deliver reliable performance and optimal power during these demanding conditions. So the auto EFB batteries are tailor-made for start-stop systems to ensure reliability and efficiency. That is correct, and they're a perfect fit for vehicles with start-stop technology ensuring reliable engine starts, efficient energy management, and the ability, guess what, to handle all the vehicle electrical systems. That's a huge plus. Yeah. So ultimately, you're improving the fuel economy and reducing the emissions. Makes the government happy. Absolutely. We need that. Oh, yeah. Are there any limitations to using the EFB batteries to hit different vehicles? Yes. So following the OE, which is the original equipment recommendations, is crucial when you're making these decisions to put either AGM or EFB. Batteries are not interchangeable in every system due to this different electrical characteristics, which they call it the BMS, the battery monitoring system. So. If you're using the wrong battery within those applications, that can lead to compatibility issues and reduce performance. And in some cases, it could even void the warranties. We That's, that's something we want good. to stay away from, yes. So always consult the vehicle's manual or the manufacturer for the correct battery and recommendations to ensure optimal performance and compatibility. You know, that makes sense. So it's essential to use the correct battery for each vehicle. Absolutely. Now, let me share some of the industry insights with you. So the auto EFBs are gaining popularity, represented about 12% of the vehicles manufactured in the past three years. The share is forecasted to grow to 20% over the next five years, especially in the European and Asian car markets. So start-stop technology is here to stay. That's a significant growth rate. The demand for start-stop systems is definitely on the rise, isn't it? I agree, yes, and indeed. So EFB batteries are becoming an increasingly important component in the modern vehicles. So EFB batteries offer enhanced performance and are tailored specifically for vehicles with start-stop systems, ultimately benefiting fuel efficiency and reduced emissions. Ex Obviously, that's very important. Oh, exactly. And their applications are crucial in the automotive industry, and you must understand their significance and recommend them when it's appropriate for that vehicle. That is very important because if you recommend them for the wrong application, it's not going to be good. But thanks for sharing all of this valuable information, Jeff. It's fascinating to learn about the advancements in automotive battery technology. Well, Gail, you're welcome. So providing relevant information about the EFB batteries helps you make an informed decision benefiting the customers and the environment. You know, that's great. I, 
I really enjoyed learning more about the enhancements and advancements that we have. Hey, we're just building better batteries. That's what we're doing. And again, thank all of you out there for being here today. And Jeff, where, how can they learn more about it? Well, if you love the content, please let us know your feedback. Also, if you have questions, reach out to the proclinics at ibsa.com. Thank you, guys.